My journey with medicine really began when I was around 11 or 12 or so. My father was diagnosed with cognitive impairment, which then progressed into full onset vascular dementia. And so my mother and I worked as his primary caretakers during high school. And although it was a difficult experience, I, I found a lot of meaning in it. And so I told myself when I got to college, I would explore medicine as a career. Uh, both my parents are also academics. Uh, they're humanities professors. My dad taught philosophy. My mom taught English. So as a kid, they always encouraged me to be very curious. And I told myself I would explore research when I got into college too. Ended up going to the University of Texas at Dallas. Go Comets. It's been a wonderful four years here. Um, first two years, I ended up working in two basic research labs. One in nanotechnology, the other one in molecular biology. Um, I also got my EMT certification, so I got the chance to work in the ED department um, at Baylor Hospital in downtown Dallas. Got the chance to volunteer in the geriatric inpatient division. Um, and throughout all those experiences, I just realized that I loved medicine and research for the same reasons, ironically. I felt like I needed an admissions counselor because of the lack of resources in my general environment. Um, I go to a phenomenal public school here in Texas. Um, I loved going here, but we don't have a lot of MD-PhD applicants. I believe last year I was the only, if not one of two, MD-PhD applicants, and there hadn't been many before me. My Health Professions Advising Center is really good at getting people into med school, but they don't have a lot of experience with ap applicants like me. And then there's not a lot of resources on the internet either when it comes to applying to MD-PhD. So I really just wanted someone who could teach me how the application process worked and how to craft my experiences in a way that was engaging and compelling to like an admission school committee. Yeah, so the reason why I decided to work with Inspira specifically was really the transparency and the expertise. When I logged onto their website, the first thing I saw were the success rates. These are the number of people who got into these top institutions in the nation. And I thought that was phenomenal. And then I went and I looked at the prices and what I would get for the packages that I was looking at. Very competitive pricing, especially considering the volume of advice that I was going to be receiving. Um, I ended up reaching out and having a phone consultation. Very, very kind individuals. Um, they were very knowledgeable. The mentor that I worked with was... Yeah, he had been on the admissions committee for a couple of years, I believed, and he was a practicing doctor at one of the top institutions in the nation. And so all of the advice that he gave me, I knew was relevant and, and I could trust it. I would say the aspect that I found to be most valuable working with my counselor, I knew that I had all of the ingredients for a good application. Like I had pretty solid numbers, I had enough experience both on the clinical and the researching side, but I just didn't know how to piece them together in this beautiful narrative that would actually be compelling to read from an admissions perspective. And so that's where my mentor really helped me. He helped me put all the pieces together in a way that made sense, that was engaging, and helped me get interviews. Yes, yeah, so, so far I've been accepted into six fully funded MD-PhD programs. First one was the University of Rochester then Washington University um, at St. Louis. I got into Vanderbilt University, um, the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor, Mount Sinai University, or Mount Sinai in New York City, um, and then most recently, Johns Hopkins University. 